for the uh, invitation and the opportunity to join uh, the rest of this distinguished panel and talk about concerns that we have over the exposure in the classroom to not only students but teachers as well. I apologize, I am not able to get there in person. Uh, hopefully, this will work uh, to get uh, these my concerns across to, to you and the audience. On the next slide, I thought it would be worthwhile just talking about a little bit about my bio. Um, I have spent my entire career in the technology sector. So I've seen in my experience uh, a significant amount of benefits that can come from the implementation of technology. I've also seen the potential harm if technology is not implemented correctly. And in my opinion, our implementation of technology in the classroom today is not safe. Uh, and I don't think that's even like over the last five years I've had the opportunity to meet with uh, uh, international experts, individuals from uh, organizations such as institutions such as Harvard, Yale, Columbia, some of them are uh, distinguished members of the panel. I've had the opportunity to meet with a, um, an advisor for the World Health Organization, and he goes into developing countries and helps them create and start their cancer research facilities. I've also had the opportunity to spend, to spend time with one of the technical writers for Al Gore's team that won the Nobel Prize. So, so when I make a statement that our current implementation is harmful, I don't, I don't make that statement like uh, That's what caused me to uh, help co-found CPARS team over five years ago. Uh, we focus on really two things. One is educate and inform Canadians about the potential harm from uh, wireless devices and how to use it safely, and also to really work with all three levels of government in Canada to try to create a safe environment. I joined the, the strong team at the Environmental Health Trust a couple of years ago, not only because of their advocacy work, but also, in my view, I think uh, Environmental Health Trust is one of the only nonprofits in the world today that really focus, uh, focuses as well on high level uh, research in uh, controlling environmental uh, health hazards. Uh, on the next slide, I just highlighted a couple of areas uh, of manufacturing warnings. Every device from every manufacturer carries a warning about how to use the device safely so that it doesn't break FCC guidelines. Unfortunately, those devices are either on page 160 on four point font in some manual that nobody reads, or in fact, they're, they're buried about five layers below the initial screen. So legally, my industry is, uh, is protected, but I would argue that ethically, the behavior is actually uh, should be questioned. Um, students, and teachers, and parents are simply unaware of these uh, of these warnings that are, as they say, associated with every device. Two of the examples I have here: the Samsung device, which is a laptop is meant to put on your lap. If, it, if in fact used that way, uh, it will break FCC guidelines. I've heard you know some of the other speakers talk about the guidelines. In fact, are under eight out of touch. But even if, so, if you don't keep that device eight inches away from your lap, it actually will harm you, um, even according to FCC guidelines. Uh, the iPad, you can try to read that, that the uh, instructions there. There's a convoluted way you have to position the laptop on or the iPad on your lap or away from your body, holding it a certain way so that the antennas are not held too close to your body, so that in fact you aren't harmed. Uh, when it comes to cell phones, I don't have examples there, but every cell phone carries a warning. Minimum distance that's uh, that's uh, that's safe is at least a half an inch. Some devices need up to an inch uh, to be detected. On the next slide, we, talk, we started talking. Well, we initially talked about putting uh, routers and putting Wi-Fi in schools. We had one router that was actually uh, put out in the hallway, and it would provide the coverage of. As you can see now, we're starting to talk about high density Wi Fi design systems and some of the guidelines from, from the manufacturers. So, Cisco talks about, uh, you know, and the uh, use of consider putting these access points um, under the seat because the signals are being attenuated. In other words, the signal is being absorbed by the students in the classroom. And oh, by the way, it's a pretty good way to just hide the device. Um, uh, the net here talks about uh, the demand, the significant increase in demand because of the multiple devices that are being uh, used. We've done some studies where, on average, there's at least two or three devices per student. So if you get 30 students in a room, there could be anywhere from 60 to 90 devices in that classroom, 
all commitment and all talk and all the information uh, to do this. Uh, secure ads, you know, very clearly said, don't even think about using a residential router because they're not powerful enough to provide this high density coverage that we need. Extreme Networks is one of the many, many organizations now talking about a mass, a mass networking system. So instead of each device talking to the router directly, we're now sending them all in the nodes so that in fact each device can actually talk to every other device. So now you've got up to anywhere from 60 to 90 devices acting like little mini routers. And what that says is you've got 60 to 90 devices reading uh, all the students and the teachers in the class. Next slide is, is an example as we get more and more of the yellow and red and the high end of not only coverage but high end of the readings. And you can see in this configuration, we've gone well beyond one router per classroom. We're now starting to see where there's these hotspots across the whole uh, part of the classroom. It used to be uh, you were worried about the student that was sitting at the fringe area where two routers may overlap coverage. Well, now that those things are gone from this mass networking system where everybody's actually bombarded. Uh, when my team or any other team would go in and install a system, they're worried about data transfer rates, they're worried about coverage, and they worry about minimizing the delay. Uh, there is absence. So, therefore, you would put in maximum power, turn the devices up maximum power, you have the maximum number of routers that the organization can afford, with absolutely no regard for the exposure to potential harm the students of PTs in the classroom. Uh, we did a, a, a test here in, in a local school in Oakville uh, where we worked with a local manufacturer at the school and by uh, shifting the routers around in the classroom, by turning down the power in, in the, uh, of each router, we were able to reduce the radiation in that school by 90% and had no impact on the coverage and the uh, ability for the students to do their work uh, and the, on the Wi-Fi system. The other concern that I have is that on each of these devices are individually approved by the FCC in terms of their radiation emissions and the amount of, of, of radiation that they submit. Unfortunately, there is no body that I'm aware of in North America, no government body, that actually measures the cumulative effect. So we went into a school, another school in Ontario, we measured the cumulative effect and then exposure to those in that classroom from all of these devices, all communicating to the, to the routers and ball, went well beyond FCC guidelines. Now, you've heard the guidelines are bad, and I think, well, here we've got situations now where we are actually breaking the guidelines because of the cumulative effect of all our devices. The next slide we'll talk about is the insurance companies. Insurance companies and insurance industries' business is based on identifying future risks. If they don't identify future risks, and they insure people for it, then they are actually going to be out of business. So we use, uh, industry uses the uh, insurance industry and the insurance sector as a bellwether to identify future risks. You can even see here, see here one example of an insurance policy where wireless providers are not able to get covered. A lot of them have to self-insure themselves because they don't have the coverage uh, from other insurance companies, insurance organizations. Uh, two bellwethers in that environment, uh, Boys of London, issued a white paper in 2010, and the white paper states, the risk associated with cell phones and wireless devices is comparable to the risk associated with asbestos. Another organization switched to it, Swiss Ray, which is a world leader in reinsurance. In 2014, their white paper states clearly that electromagnetic fields are a potential emerging risk. On the final slide, you're going to say, okay, so you've heard a lot of examples and ideas and what we can do. I think, I think there has to be a fundamental shift in my industry, and then it can be driven by parents and teachers and students in the class to say we have to reorient our whole mindset to the developers and the designers and installers of these systems to say we have to provide cover, but at the same time we have to think about minimizing the radiation exposure to the people that are in the classroom. And some of the techniques that you've already heard about using hardware connections, and using paper by, by uh, Dr. Tim Chocolate, the challenge is the whole business piece around wireless devices. We know that wire uh, connections are safer, they're faster, uh, they're, less, they're more reliable, they're less vulnerable to security and privacy attacks, and they're fundamentally safer. So 
but so you know things are gone in there. Peter Dorgan gave some examples of you know, when you're building a new facility or renovating a facility, that's absolutely the cheapest and best time to put in uh, the wires, wires loose. If we can't always have hard wire connections, then turn off the routers, turn off the access points and the devices that you not use. You know, download the information, turn off the devices, put them in airplane mode if you use it, uh, turn off Wi-Fi, and then you can still run the, run the test or run, run the lesson without having everybody do that necessarily with radio. You know, prohibit cell phones and other wearables that aren't even needed in the classroom from being turned on or being in the classroom at all. I think we need to go back and challenge my industry more to provide better solutions, not only the devices, but the software that supports it, to allow uh, the, um, the teachers and the students to use them in a safer environment. So you own your home, you own your environment, protect yourself, protect your family, and you can then um, at least have several hours of rejuvenation and, and repair.